Salam Dostar. Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Singer Dad Reacts. My name is Josh, and I'm excited to be back doing reactions. Um, things have been a little crazy around here. I took a little trip back up to where I grew up in Alaska for a little uh, vacation, and I've had several things going on. So I'm glad to be back um, interacting with all of you and, and, of course, reacting to one of my favorite artists on my channel, Dimash. Um, this is one that came highly recommended from you, um, and it's pronounced e kanaide. Hopefully, I pronounced that right. Um, so, what I do for those that are new to my channel is I go through the lyrics uh, before I do the actual reaction and analysis, and I talk about you know what the songwriter and the lyricist and what I feel like they're trying to convey through the lyrics and the message of the wording and the, the story arc. Um, and that gives me a little more context and understanding of the song before I actually listen to it and, and watch it. So if you're not interested in that part of my reaction, um, feel free to skip ahead. If you are, I will go through the, the lyrics here with you. Um, as I said, I kanaide, music from what I've researched um, was written by Tamaki Koji and Matsui Goro um, wrote the lyrics. Um, and the English translation I found is Don't Go, Anything, I Can't See Anything, Because of Crying All the Time. But I'm not sad, I'm happy that I could touch you warmly. Ah, uh, don't go, don't go. This is the chorus. Never ever let go. Ah, uh, don't go, don't go, just like this. Someday my heart will someday be somewhere far away. Everyone becomes a memory. I wish I never knew, I wish I never knew. And the re chorus repeats, and then the chorus repeats. So, not a lot there as far as the lyrics. What I did find when I researched this a little bit as to the meaning of this song is that it's um, a story of someone that is sad that someone they care about very much is leaving, but they're kind of putting on this air of indifference to kind of um, make it look like they're not as impacted by this person leaving as they are type thing. So that's kind of what I'm picking up as well. Um, but I'm not sad, right? That's what they're saying to kind of, you know, stave off this feeling that might be coming through that they're sad that this person is leaving. Um, and they're kind of trying to say, oh, well, I'm happy that I could touch you warmly. You know, I'm happy that we had this time together. And they're trying to kind of make light of um, how deeply they uh, feel um, sad about this individual leaving, right? Um, someday my heart will someday be f uh, far away. Everyone becomes a memory. I wish I never knew, right? So you kind of sense the pain from that statement. I wish I never knew. They're almost saying, oh, it would almost be easier if I just never knew you and never cared about you like this. And then um, it wouldn't hurt as bad when you leave, right? So that's kind of the feeling I'm picking up from that. Um, so hopefully this is, hopefully these are the right lyrics that I found. Um, if there's more to this song and um, I miss some of that or there are missing lyrics that I that I wasn't able to, to locate, please let me know in the comments. Um, I believe that this, um, like the last reaction I did, of Dimash is is also recorded in a studio kind of around the time of COVID. Um, and so they it was the Tokyo Jazz Festival was, was kind of held um, virtually basically is what it sounds like to me. So um, feel free to let me know whether that's the case or not and, and if that's correct or there are any additional details I need to be made aware of about this. Um, with that, I will jump into this reaction. Um, 
Now, if you are new to my channel or if you haven't already, if you could please um, click on the subscribe and the notification bell to be made aware of any of my new reactions coming up. I'm, gonna, I'm back on track and uh, I'm planning on doing more reactions going forward here. Um, I've got my space set up and everything, so um, expect to see more from me coming here. So with that, I'm going to dive in here and thank you all for your patience. Um, I'm excited to, you know, get back on track with Dimash and, and interact with all of you dears again. Um, so with that, let's dive right in here. I realized something, sorry to stop right there, but I remember now seeing a comment from one of you regarding this uh, song that it is a Japanese version of the song The Aut uh, Autumn Strong. And this is one I reacted to already of Dimash um, a while ago. And so when that first lead in introduction with the instrumental there, with the instruments there, um, played, I recognize the melody from having reacted to Autumn Strong. So I remember now um, what what this song is and the fact that it's the Japanese version of, of that. So I'm excited. That's a, a pretty song. I like that song. So um, let me go back a little bit to make sure I don't miss anything here. What he's doing right there is very difficult. Um, he's, I, yeah, I've seen him do this before in other songs where he uses um, his breath control and his supreme control of like the openings that, you know, the sound comes through and all the openings here from the larynx up, right? Um, the, and the vocal folds and all the things that are involved with creating the sound. He has supreme control over all those mechanisms. And what he's doing here is very difficult in that he's creating this breathiness, but yet usually what tends to happen when a singer tries to get really breathy is they lose, they either lose pitch on the sound, so they might go flat, or um, it sounds scratchy kind of you know or it just sounds like a whisper and you can't really hear the note itself right so none of those things are the case with Dimash and you hear it if you I'll go back a little bit and you can hear what I'm talking about but the pitch is there it's it's on pitch it's not a full sound obviously because it's you know breathy but it, it's still there and and strong enough where it, it comes through so he's he's controlling it perfectly so that it it comes through to a degree and you don't lose the melody and all of that but yet it's just really you know really aspirate really breathy and um it's it's really impressive what he's doing very difficult so let me go back and you can kind of listen to what i'm talking about and i turn the english subtitles on here too So even it's he still has the resonance there even. And 
And that is adding a little more air there. See, it's coming through a little more. this melody we we'll see how we change the texture there what he did there he changed the texture like mid phrase I'm gonna have to go back and listen to that again um, it's almost like he was he, he was applying some power and then he kind of backed it off for the latter part of the phrase and kind of changed the texture a little bit on it that's what's crazy to me watching Dimash every time is just his ability to to completely do whatever he wants with the phrasing, with the textures, with, you know, obviously the range and the genre, you know, flipping from classical to pop or, you know, whatever. Um, he has full flexibility to do anything at any point along the way. Um, and it's easy for him. It's not hard at all. Let me go back a little bit and see if we can pick up on what he did here. Yeah, see right there? If you listen right here, right there, he's pulling it back. That's cool. Now he's giving a little more gravitas to it. See his cheeks are all lifted. You can almost hear like when he comes to the end of a phrase and he's not doing like a hard cut off with the sound he's kind of just it's really interesting how he's kind of ending the notes at the at the end of the phrase there he's kind of like still applying the air to the tone but then just kind of pulling his vocal folds out of the equation so he's not pushing any pitch through um, for a note is you know there's no note there but 
there's still air coming through. So it kind of has, you can kind of hear the breath come through, but no note, if you know what I mean. I'll go back real quick and you can hear what I'm talking about. But um, yeah, his voice, he's, it's just, this is effortless for him. I mean, this song is not hard at all for him. And that's why I think n no songs that I've seen him sing really are require effort, even the ones that are, you know, that appear to be very hard. But especially this one, because it's not really taxing to his range or anything. Um, but you can hear, like, just the resonance and the the power behind his his voice as he sings through these phrases. And I, I mentioned before, but you can see kind of the singer's smile that I've mentioned before on my reactions, which means he's lifting the soft palate up to, to create more volume and space and, and more resonance to the sound. So he's brilliant with all of his technical abilities. Let me rewind real quick to the end of this phrase and you'll see what I'm talking, you'll hear what I'm talking about. Hear that? Oh, wow. Here he goes. Again, he's not even trying right now. <laughs> Jeez. He's really uh, opening things up now. Nice run. Wow. Okay, before I finish off here, some of these jumps he's doing, like the one he did there and the where he did a jump and then came right back, that's really hard to do. Like it's one thing to kind of get to the end of a phrase and then start at the next phrase high and do a jump kind of in that context, but to be singing in an actual phrase and then to jump up so like not even having a break kind of between the notes so he didn't really do like a you know like a uh, 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 you know he didn't he didn't have like a, a break in between one note and the next which allows you to kind of engage your larynx and and perform the jump and change your vocal folds to allow for you to to jump up to the other to the higher notes right so that's even harder to do. You have to have really a lot of agility uh, within your vocal folds to do that. So, yeah, it, it's crazy what he does. And obviously, t singing up in the stratosphere, and then he jumps down. And the, the thing, too, that was impressive when he was doing the humming with his mouth closed is you could tell he had a lot of space back here um, when he was humming, and he was you know, creating a lot of, you know, good quality sound behind his lips there. And then he goes down to the lower notes, which is harder when you're humming. Um, I'm a bass and I can tell you that like when you're humming and you have to do low notes, it's a little harder because you're having to actually push more air to get the sound to come through because you don't have an open mouth to allow the sound to come through. Imagine 
it's almost like the thought of like take a speaker that you have say like um, for your stereo or whatever and now just put like a towel or something over it um, and that to muffle the sound um, you have to turn the volume up a little bit to get the sound to come through as loud as it was before when you've covered the speaker up physically and that's kind of how it works when you're humming like that you have to uh, add more air force behind it um, and and that's harder when you're singing low because um, you're already exerting a lot of air just to get those folds to vibrate and generate the low the low notes so yeah crazy let me go back to this high part again this was crazy sorry guys okay See how open his mouth is? Notice like when he was up at that high note, and I pointed this out in my first reaction of Dimash actually in SOS, but there's no tension whatsoever in his neck. So a lot of times that's how you can tell if, if a singer's really straining and not supporting correctly is if they show a lot of tension in their neck or their shoulders if their shoulders are kind of like tight and maybe lifted a little bit or if they when they breathe if they kind of this whole upper part kind of moves when they breathe that means that they're carrying a lot of tension and stress in their upper body and or their neck right but with him you never see any tightness in here and part of it's because he's in his head voice and you don't really Unless you're doing it completely wrong, you're, you're not going to really strain for those notes in your head voice. But with him, he's pushing the chest voice up into his head voice for that, that strong mix that he has. And so he does, it's not like a pure head voice where it's just his head. He's pushing the chest up in there as well. And so that could theoretically cause him to tighten up if he's doing it wrong. So he's, he's a master. We'll, we'll listen to that high note one more time. And you watch his watch his neck. Yeah. It's not bulging, it's not tight. You can tell he's really feeling it. See how there's still the resonance there? It's not easy. Mm -hmm. I love how it's kind of like the cello. What he was singing kind of really kind of mimicked the cello. The Wow. Okay. <laughs> so I definitely missed um, reacting to Dimash and, and watching him just completely defy all, all reality of, of what you're used to seeing from a male vocalist. Um, he's just so technically superior in the way that he approaches the songs that he sings and the phrasing and the the breath control and all the different aspects that are kind of at the core of of quality singing he's he's just a pro at every single one of them and um what i love though about him is that he could just kind of try to sing as a technical singer and just show off and kind of, you know, just focus on the technical side of, of what he's doing to kind of do it that way and not really bring the emotion and the soulfulness into the, the performance. But 
he really is a complete artist in that he focuses on the emotion behind the lyrics and the the story and um, really feeling that and and relating to that so that it comes through in his performance and that's part of as if you've watched any of my reactions that's part of what i love from any of my um, artists that i react to laura fabian's another prime example and of course dimash loves her um she's a, another prime example of a performer that really just puts all of her heart um, and soul into each performance. Um, and you can feel that coming through. Um, so yeah, I, all of you that know me and have seen my Dimash reactions, I love him. Um, I love what he stands for. I love how family oriented he is and I'm down to earth and humble he is. And, um, the goal he has to really just inspire and, um, you know, tell this, these strong stories with the, the performances of these songs and all of that. So it was another great performance. I, I wouldn't say it's my favorite Dimash performance that I've seen, but I love this song. Uh, I remember reacting to it, the Autumn Strong. Um, and it's a beautiful, beautiful melody. And he did an amazing job. Um, and I've, some of the stuff that I read said that, you know, the Japanese, um, people were very impressed with Dimash's Japanese and his interpretation of the language and all of that, which again, doesn't surprise me. He's sung in multiple languages and, um, does well in every language from what I've seen. So, uh, he's just a phenomenal artist and, um, brilliant brilliant individual so with that i will cut it short um but thank you again for your patience for those that have been waiting for me to come back and do reactions and also of course do a re dimash reaction um glad to be back glad to be doing more reactions of dimash and i'll end my reaction the same way i do with all of them by reaching out to all of you across the world to let you know that you are special, you are loved, and you can accomplish your dreams. And I hope that you have people in your life that support you and love you and um, are kind to you and um, encourage you as you strive to be the best person you can be. And I hope that in some small way, my channel can, can help with that and bring light to your life through the music. And uh, I thank you again for your support and take care.